Last Friday, there was a fist fight in the courtroom involving defendants, spectators, police, and deputy marshals. The defendants included several priests, a nun, and a former nun. Three of them and one of their attorneys were cited for contempt during the six-day trial. outside our home what was going on when it got bad and it got very bad. My father changed from being a wonderful highly educated person to somebody that I hated. My dad started drinking more and more. He would go out one person and come back a different person. My father um, beat her when I was 15 years old. I intervened and took a knife toward him. I tried to kill him. My mother finally told him he had to leave real young. I decided I didn't want any parts of that marriage thing. to shop for this long list of really horrible clothes and the ugliest, ugliest, horrible looking old granny shoes that I don't think were ever fashionable in any era. We kept silence almost all day. The only private space we had was about this big where you could keep your extra habit and this <laughs> bowl <laughs> that you wash your face in. <laughs> it was really different. <laughs> My first teaching assignment after I made final vows was to Montgomery Catholic High School in Montgomery, Alabama. I started talking about social events in class from that very first year. And I got to know the students at St. Jude's, the black school, and formed a baseball team with the two schools. That was my like radical action in Montgomery, Alabama. But some of the students that I taught ended up becoming soldiers, going to Vietnam, and dying. It changed my daily life in all sorts of ways. It uh, changed my friendships. It changed my language, um, my relationship to authority. I think I started cussing in 64 when I came back from Montgomery, Alabama. One of my best friends, David Darst, was in an action in Baltimore in 1968. And through him and others like him, I got involved in a huge community of Catholic anti-war activists. On March 22nd, 1969, nine of us, five priests, an ex-priest and his wife, an ex-nun, a young draft resistor, and I, a nun, broke into the Dow Chemical Office in Washington, D.C. 
in protest of their making napalm, nerve gas, and defoliants used in the war in Vietnam. I needed to fight back. I think we just felt so high on the action and so good about having done it and nobody died and uh, that we were doing something important and significant that there was more a feeling of triumph than fear. We were released on bond with all kinds of stipulations. There was a big reaction when I went back to St. Louis. The parents shut down the school for three days. They wanted to hang, draw, and quarter me. <laughs> Even though I had students standing up for me, my colleagues, and the order, eventually, after the school closed down for three days, I made a decision to withdraw from the classroom so that the students could come back and go to school. In Washington, a rowdy trial of anti-war protesters ended today. They were convicted on charges of breaking and entering offices of the Dow Chemical Company. When I found out I was pregnant, I had just gone through the Dow Chemical trial and hadn't yet been sentenced. And I think all I did when I first got the news was cry because I was still technically in the order. If the judge found out, I would be locked up immediately. The biggest most courageous decision of my life was to have my son faced with a possible 35 years in federal prison, a judge that hated my guts, an FBI that had stacks of suspicions of other crimes against me, and the prospect of maybe even losing that child. 